Uh, I love his smile. So I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred now. Okay. The title of the message tonight is Bless Your Enemies. Mm -hmm. Bless Your Enemies. Uh, you know, it's easy uh, for us to take an offense if somebody comes against us, but that's not the way God wants us to operate and live. He wants us to live an amazing life down here uh, with a, his amazing love. And he's wanting to pour it out mm. and pour it out through you uh, so that you can impact the people around you. And the, But the devil wants to destroy you. The, uh, Jesus said the uh, thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. So uh, the enemy will use people uh, against you. And I hope, hope you don't have enemies, but in case you do, uh, this will be a helpful message for you, very practical message that we need to be aware of. You know, uh, there's only one thing that's required of us, and that is to love. Ooh, hallelujah. Let us walk in love. Amen. And uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 8 says that love never, never fails. fails. Isn't that exciting? In love will overcome opposition. The, the enemy will try to destroy you through your family, through your friends. Uh, they'll rise up against you, but uh, his love will overcome. His love never fails. And uh, uh, so, you know, there's a, a verse, Romans 8, 28, and I'll ask Sherry to read this. Okay. Uh, this is out of the New American Standard Bible. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay. So he's going to turn everything around for your good, whatever comes your way. So if the enemy tries to use someone against you, God will turn it around. And I'm going to show you how that, how that operates and how you can be a part of that turnaround. Uh, we, Sherry and I talked to a woman uh, Saturday and uh, her daughter had said some terrible things against her own mother, said terrible mm -hmm. things against mm -hmm. her. Now the mother immediately wanted to, to come back and, and contest all of the things that she had said and defend herself. But the Holy Spirit said, tell her what I say about her how I see her. Well, mm -hmm. so she sent that message to her daughter and it turned the situation around. It was a time that the uh, relationship between the mother and the daughter could have been ruined uh, for, the, for forever. But no, the Holy Spirit had a way out. Uh, and so you have to listen to the Holy Spirit. So there's no formula uh, to this message. It's about being led by the Spirit of God. But if the enemy is trying to use people against you and they become your enemy and speak evil things about you, there must be a purpose. Uh, from Romans 8, 28, <clears throat> says he'll turn things around for your good. So it, why do we have enemies? Well, it must be for our good. There must be a purpose for the enemies, a purpose for the enemies and we don't have to be overpowered by the enemies, but we can uh, embrace the empowering love of God. Hallelujah. That's what he wants us to do. Not Hallelujah. to be overpowered by our enemies, mm -hmm. but to be empowered by God's love. Amen. Uh, love will never fail. And uh, it, it's really important to, to realize that when an enemy comes against you, there is a way out, a way that you can overcome that situation and you can turn your enemy, listen to me, you can turn your enemy into a blessing and a reward. Ooh, uh, hallelujah. So we're going to be talking about how can you turn an enemy into a blessing and a reward? Now, um, most of my life, I, I would have said I didn't have very many enemies, uh, but there was a time I did. I had a lot of enemies, mm -hmm. and that was uh, when I became a department head at the university. 
uh, I had an overall goal and to make decisions that were best for the overall department. And I had about a hundred employees that, uh, that I uh, supervised at a time, 100 employees. And uh, my uh, goal was to make decisions that would be best for the whole department, for everyone. Uh, but every one of those employees, they had their own agenda and self-interest, and they would often rise up against me. And uh, so I learned a lot of things during that period of time, uh, about 10 years, uh, where I had a lot of enemies that would rise up against me and uh, would did not like my decisions. For one of the things I did was to try to correct some uh, problems that were in the department. And, uh, and they never liked that uh, because it affected other people. I also hired lots of people. I fired people. I promoted people. I determined people's income. So all of those things, all of those decisions that I were, was making, I was trying to do what was best for the overall department, but that was not uh, consistent with their self-interests. And so I had lots of people come against me in a lot of different ways. But if you realize when the enemies come that you can turn that situation, that situation to a blessing for you, a blessing and a reward. And so we're going to, we're going to talk about that. And I learned a lot in 10 years because <laughs> I faced a lot of enemies during that 10 year period. Uh, but what I learned was some of the things I'm going to talk about here tonight. And we'll see Luke uh, chapter five. It tells us that we are to love our enemies. Luke chapter six. Uh, okay. Read that. I'm sorry. Six. Yeah. Read Luke six, 27 through, through 28. But I say to you who hear, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who are abusive to you. Okay, Amen. so we need to love them. We need to bless them. Ooh, we need to pray, pray for, them. for them. Oh, hallelujah. And so if you've got a lot of enemies, you've got a lot of people you can bless, a lot of people you can love, a lot of people that you can pray for. Hallelujah. Now, that really doesn't tell what's the benefit of it. It just tells us that's a commandment. Mm -hmm. uh, th these came out of the words of Jesus, Luke chapter six. These were the words of Jesus that we're to love our enemies. And then Romans 12 uh, goes on and, and says we're to bless people. Romans 12, 14, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse. Oh, okay. hallelujah. We're not to curse people. Oh, we're to bless yes, people. Yes, I That just should be our mentality. Yes. Let's be like God. You know, he sends the rain on the righteous and, and the unrighteous. unrighteous. His sun shines on the people who are righteous and the people who are unrighteous. Let's be like God. Let's love people. Let's even love our enemies and mm -hmm. bless them. Uh, okay, so that's a commandment. That's what we're commanded to do. And it's a sin. Oh, let me tell you, it's a sin. Job mm -hmm. uh, says it's a sin if I, I even ask uh, for vengeance and revenge against mm -hmm. the people. That's a sin. Okay, so now we, we see that it's a commandment. Now we see it's a sin if we even ask for revenge. So oh, wow. I'll share you to read this. Job 31 verses 29 through 30. This is out of the New Living Translation. Have I ever rejoiced when disaster struck my enemies? The enemies, talking about enemies here. Are become excited when harm came their way? No, I have never sinned by cursing anyone or by asking for revenge. Oh, it's, Ooh, he said... I have never sinned by asking mm. for revenge. Oh, so in wow. other words, do not ask for revenge on mm, people mm, because mm, that mm. is sin. Well, I want to talk about a couple mm. of people who were, uh, they were abused. They were, people came against them. They had enemies. And the first one I want to mention uh, is Joseph. Yes, uh, Joseph, uh, God's favor was upon him. 
uh, his father's favor was mm. upon him. And uh, uh, he, he had some dreams that God was going to make him a ruler. And he shared his uh, dreams uh, with his brothers and his brothers hated him mm -hmm. uh, because the favor of the father was upon him and they hated him. And, and they basically, they sold him into slavery into Egypt. And, and then uh, years later, and, and you know the story of Joseph where he had gone through Potiphar's house and been a servant there and then as a slave and, and then went into prison, had to go into prison. So it was just a terrible situation, but he kept his integrity towards the God mm -hmm. and God was always with him. Oh, that's the same with you and I. God will be with you wherever you are, whatever you go through, whatever enemies uh, try to do to you, God will be with you if you keep your attention on him, your focus on him. A and then when his brothers finally came to him and he was a ruler, in Egypt and he had stored up a lot of grain and, and there had been two years of drought and famine and there had been no grain produced in those two years, but he had enough grain uh, to feed that population for another five years. And so when he saw his brothers, he recognized them, but they didn't recognize him and uh, they, they were fearful of him. Uh, but when he identified himself uh, to them, uh, he makes this incredible statement, and, and this is in Genesis 50, verse 20. I'll ask Sherry to read it. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result, to keep many people alive. Okay, so there's a bigger purpose here. Woo! Hallelujah. There's a bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. We've got to keep looking at things from God's perspective. There's a big purpose here that uh, God wanted to send uh, uh, Joseph into Egypt to store up all this grain to save the population. Otherwise, they were going to starve. And so mm -hmm. Joseph makes this incredible statement. You meant it. What you did for me, towards me, selling me into slavery down here into Egypt, you meant it for evil but God meant it for good. See, that's that turnaround that I was talking about in Romans. And so the enemy mm -hmm. uh, comes against you. Sometimes it comes, at, uh, the enemy uses people to come against you. And, and But God can turn it around to good. And, and so you've got to be close to him and make sure that he gets turned around. And one of the reasons it won't turn around is if you come back and fight your enemies mm -hmm. and you want to try uh, to defend yourself you def want to defend yourself and, and 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 just be in a natural state and a carnal mind see is going to lead to destruction but if we mm -hmm. are you are spiritual and if you operate and walk in the spirit and be, be spiritual, spiritual. Oh, see that. you'll restore those relationships that the enemy is trying to destroy and uh, you don't have to be overpowered by the enemy or by your enemies uh, because what you do is to run into the love of God Ooh, and the good. love of God see will empower mm, you to mm. overcome these enemies oh that's good say oh, it again hallelujah the, the love of God the enemy uh, wants to overpower you but when you run into the love of God, he will empower you uh, so that you can overcome your enemies. You don't have to be subject to your enemies. Mm -hmm. And that's what I found in that 10 years uh, of dealing with uh, lots and lots of people that I didn't have to be subject to their anger and their uh, bitterness and, and all of that. What I had to do was to keep my heart I had to keep serving the Lord and following him and doing what he said. I had lots of uh, hostile situations, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit would always show me Hallelujah. how to overcome them. And, and I think about a man one time I saw just a few years ago and, and his uh, uh, wife had just uh, lost her father. Uh, he had passed away and her brother, 
uh, had stolen all of her inheritance. And so this man was so upset. He was just almost at stroke level. His blood pressure was so high. And you just can't operate like that. Mm. Now his wife wasn't that upset about it. She she had come to grips with uh, what had happened. But but this man needed counseling that, that he had to let those things go. God, see, God is our shield and our refuge. Mm -hmm. Well, we don't have to fight our battles. The Lord fights our battles. We're not we're not in this world. We're uh, to to be overcome by the enemy. He has placed us here for a purpose. Oh, yeah. And the only way that we're going to fulfill our purpose is to walk in the love of God because the love of God will empower us mm -hmm. uh, to overcome. The love of God will overcome uh, hostile situations and that it will never fail. First Corinthians 13, 8, the love of God mm -hmm. never fails. Now, the next person in the Bible I want to talk about uh, that came under a lot of attack was David, uh, King David. Mm -hmm. But before he became uh, king, uh, he was in the household of Saul. And uh, Saul tried to kill him a number of times, throwing spears at him himself, mm -hmm. even sending uh, armies after him, tried to kill him a lot of different ways. Uh, but David, ooh, glory to God. Mm -hmm. See, David is a man after God's <laughs> own heart. David was a man after God's own heart. Hallelujah. So he didn't respond, uh, he didn't react to Saul the way Saul was treating him. Uh, he he said, I, this is the God's anointed. I will not kill him. Even his own soldiers wanted him to kill King Saul. But he said, no, no. this is this is King's, the, the, king. the, the, the anointed. This is the king, the anointed one of God. I will not kill him, even though I have an opportunity to kill him. And, and so later, uh, Saul did die uh, in, in battle, and uh, after David became king, uh, he said, is there anyone in Saul's household that I can help, that I can comfort? Oh, and, and so they brought to him uh, Mephibosheth, yeah, Mephibosheth. <clears throat> and, uh, and they said, this is his grandson, but he's, he's crippled. And uh, David said, well, bring him. And now this is the grandson of David's enemy, Saul, who tried to kill him over and over again. And he said, I want to take this grandson. I want him to be in my house. I want him to eat meals with me. I want him to eat, oh, glory, at my table. At my table. Can you imagine that? This is the grandson. This is the only remaining relative then or descendant of uh, Saul. And I want him to come here and I'm going to eat all of my meals with him. Ooh, Ooh. Hallelujah. Uh, well, how do you treat your enemy? Oh, how, do, how do you treat the family of your enemies? That, mm. This is David's here. David is a man after God's own heart. David did what God wanted him to do. See, when when we please God, oh, he no, makes God. even our enemies at peace with us. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So these are two remarkable stories about people who were definitely harmed and offended in, uh, by the enemies, and yet they did not take offense by that. Uh, I'm talking about Joseph and David. They definitely were in a position. Look at this. Mm -hmm. They were in a position where they could have punished. Joseph could have punished his brothers. And David, King David, uh, could have punished Saul's grandson. Mm -hmm. But they did not operate that. Uh, Joseph said, I'm going to take care of you. I want you to go over here to Goshen. And, and that's a good place yeah, for you to... Yeah 
for you to live and, and thrive and prosper. I'm going to take care of you. And David said to King Saul's uh, grandson, I'm going to take care of you. I want to eat my meals with you, all my meals. I'm going to eat here in my house and at my table, and I want you to be at my table. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. These ought to be examples yeah, for us. Yeah. See, David was a man after God's own heart. This is the way God wants us to operate. Glory to oh, God. Now, there are some benefits. There's some major, major benefits of blessing your enemies, of loving your enemies, of praying for your enemies. Mm, mm, oh, mm, glory mm, to God. Mm. And the first one, mm -hmm. and I'm going to re ask Sherry to read this out of Proverbs 20. The first blessing we're going to, there's four blessings we're going to look at. Four uh, benefits, four benefits of you blessing your, enemies. blessing your enemies. The four benefits. The first one is you get help from the Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory to God. Glory. Who do you need help from? Well, I need, need help, help from, the, from Lord. the Lord. Yes. Let's read this verse. Proverbs 20, 22. Do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord and he will help you. Oh, Woo! the Lord will help you. That's the first Hallelujah. benefit. The first benefit. Yes. The Lord will help you you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I, I just want us to think for a moment that we cannot operate the way the world operates, operates. the way the enemy wants us to operate. Mm -hmm. We have to operate at a higher level, at a spiritual level, and rely on supernatural, uh, supernatural guidance of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit and, and wisdom from above and uh, God-given knowledge and God-given discernment. When we operate with the things God gives us and puts in our heart by the Holy Spirit, see, he'll guide us in a different way than the world's going to go because the carnal mind is uh, hates God and is hostile, and to, is God. hostile to God, and it's going to be hateful to it's enemies, but we are not to hate. We are to love. Amen. Glory to God. And, and we're to love like our Father loves, with his love. You know, the Holy Spirit pours his love, the mm -hmm. love of the mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. into our heart. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that enables us to love. So I'm not talking about a natural love here. I'm talking about a supernatural love. Amen. This is the love of God because this is the Father. The Father is love. Mm. And, and the Holy Spirit pours His, His love, love into us. And then that's when we have the ability. That's the ability. That's it empowers us. It empowers us to overcome our enemies and Amen. the plans Amen. of our enemies. Hallelujah. We're not mm. subject. Mm. To the devil. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. We are, you are the head and not, not the, the tail. tail. Glory to God. Mm, mm, it's good. Jesus has given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So no matter who the enemy uses against you, you have authority to overcome it. And there four benefits of it. The first benefit is you get help from the Lord, and that's all you need. We don't need any other uh, benefits, but we do get help from the Lord. But the second benefit is we receive peace. <clears throat> Proverbs 16, 7. When a person's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he causes even his enemies to make peace with him. Woo, glory. Hallelujah. To oh, those are two, those are two good benefits of staying in God's love. And see that that love puts a bubble around you mm -hmm. and it protects you. And the you know the shield of faith stops the fiery darts, but I tell you the love of God is going to help you Amen. overcome these. It's going to help you bring it's going to bring peace where there's chaos when you bring love into a situation 
it brings peace there. Now that here's the third benefit mm. and that you receive a blessing. Ooh, if hallelujah. You bless, oh, listen to this. If you bless your enemies, mm -hmm. It says the Lord will bless you. Let's read this verse. First yeah. Peter 3, 9. <clears throat> Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. Ooh, a blessing. That is what God has called you to do. And he will grant you his blessing. Oh, and you get a blessing. You give him a Hallelujah. blessing. You give her a blessing. And you get a blessing. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. That's the way the kingdom is. Amen. The kingdom is you bless and you get blessed. Hallelujah. Oh, you love and you get love. Amen. You show favor and you receive favor. favor. It's a, a multiplication process. It's a, a place where you, where you sow, you plant and sow the seed and you receive a harvest. When you give a blessing you'll receive a blessing hallelujah. and it'll be greater than you can even comprehend I mean. oh hallelujah this is an exciting yes message. i mean you need to see your enemies i need this lord as a blessing as an opportunity for a blessing oh hallelujah, hallelujah. and a reward this is the fourth benefit of blessing your enemies okay you receive rewards proverbs 25 21 and 22. And this is from the Passion Translation. Is your enemy hungry? Buy him lunch. Win him over with your kindness. Your surprising generosity will awaken his conscience and God will reward you with favor. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Reward. There's a reward. There's a reward for blessing your enemies. Mm. There's a reward for feeding your enemies when they're hungry for giving them water when they're thirsty there is a reward hallelujah mm -hmm. hallelujah mm -hmm. so there's four benefits yes that we get from blessing our enemies and loving our enemies mm -hmm. and praying for our enemies and the four are you get the help from the lord and that's all you need but also he will bring peace to your enemies, peace mm -hmm. to you, peace to your situation. He will give you a blessing. Oh, you hallelujah. you give out a blessing and you'll you receive, receive a blessing. blessing. And here you get a reward. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now God's rewards, they're greater mm -hmm. Woo, mm -hmm. than anything the earth uh, has, than anything that uh, is here in uh, a temporary space in this temporal time because he gives rewards that are eternal that they cannot be measured he gives you rewards but glory to god you'll have hallelujah. rewards here you'll have rewards there you just be rewarded amen hallelujah you, you've got to keep your heart mm. you've got to keep your heart uh clean and not get upset at people and not uh be in turmoil and bitterness and unforgiveness. Yes, amen. <clears throat> See, if you, when the enemies come against you, if you fight back and you have bitterness and unforgiveness, then, then you don't get these benefits that I've talked about. You don't get God's help. You don't get uh, peace. You don't get blessings. Mm -hmm. You don't get rewards. Not, not if you're fighting back your enemies. And mm -hmm. see, in the world, that's what they expect you to do. Yeah. They fight you, you fight them. They just fight, 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 and there's no end to it. So if you have bitterness in your heart, yes. you, you've got to deal with it. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you have to deal with it. So let's talk about how can we deal with unforgiveness. And there was one particular man that I think about that uh, really came against me very hard. And uh, he threatened me, he screamed at me, he yelled at me, and he threatened to take me to court. Uh, and so it, it upset me. And what I, what I did after a while, I, we were in a service, and uh, what the Lord said to do was if you're having difficulty with people around you, uh, and uh, then 
what I want you to do is to write their name on a piece of paper. Okay, and so what I did, I wrote his name on that piece of paper. And, and then I said, let's just crumble that up uh, and all of our all of our unforgiveness that we have and all that bitterness, let's let's be, put it in that paper and put it in the trash. And that's what I did. So after that, after I had given it to the Lord. I had given my uh, difficulties, my bitterness and unforgiving. I had laid it all at the feet of Jesus at the cross of Jesus. And so beyond that day, I never thought about the evil that he uh, did against me. I always remembered that piece of paper. It was crumpled up. It was a big piece of paper. I crumpled it all up. I put it in the trash. I put it at the feet of Jesus. Amen. I knew I had humbled myself uh, because this man had uh, done a lot of harm to me is why, the way I looked at it and I was upset about it. But I couldn't carry that bitterness around. I couldn't carry unforgiveness around. I had to give it to Jesus. And so uh, from that day until this, I, when I think about that man, I, I have love for him. I prayed for him. He had had uh, some health issues. I prayed for him when he had those health issues. But I never think about the mean things that he did to me. What I think about is that piece of paper uh, that I put his name on. I crumpled it up. I put it in the trash because I was saying, I'm putting it at the feet of Jesus. All of the th the mean things that he did to me, I am laying them down at the feet of Jesus. And so I never think about the things that he did anymore. I always think about that piece of paper. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, there may be other things that you can do, but that's a good place to start. Uh, another thing you can do is you can bless somebody. Amen. You can bless uh, your enemies. Uh, let's say that, that you may want to send them a, a gift. Well, that's a blessing. You may want to pray for them. Well, that's a blessing. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can do, but but don't hold in your heart unforgiveness and bitterness. You have to lay it down at the feet of Jesus. And it's good for me. I'm a visual person and I like to see things. Right. And so I can see that. I can still see that piece of paper where I wrote his name and all of the things that then that represented everything that he had done, all of the mean things that he had done, that he had said to me, I gave them all to Jesus. I crumpled them up on that piece of paper. I put it in the trash. I never think about any uh, thing that he did to harm me. I always, if, it, if I ever think about him, I think about that piece of paper. And so I can love him. I can pray for him. I bless him. Like I said, uh, uh, there was a time he needed prayer. Uh, even after that, uh, he needed prayer and I could pray for him. I prayed in faith. It wasn't like, oh, I'm out there beyond my faith. No, I, I prayed in faith because God gave me a supernatural love for him a supernatural love for him. Mm -hmm. And I had to demonstrate uh, and just get my conscience clear of that situation. And having that piece of paper helped me focus my mind that I don't go, go back to the things he did. I go back to what I did and I put his, uh, all of the threats and the things that he did that were evil against me, I put them at the feet of Jesus and that helped me. And so I can pray for him. I can believe God for his healing and, and long life. And, and so we've got to do sometimes practical things uh, to make sure that we don't hold bitterness or unforgiveness in our heart. Well, I want to thank you for being here today. And I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Well, I just want to add uh, something to, to this message, which has been a wonderful message a very needful message for every single one of us um, because there are times when we face difficult situations and difficult uh, individuals. Um, a woman called me um, a few weeks back 
and she was in terrible pain all over her body. Uh, she had pain in her feet. She could hardly walk. And so we began to pray together. And all of a sudden, I, saw, I had a vision. And the vision was that she was, I saw this vine that was wrapped around her whole body. It started up here at her neck. And it was all the way down to her feet. And it was just a like a like an, an ivy, uh, but it was a, a vine. And I told her, I said, I see a vine that is just, it's sucking out or squeezing out all of your, the spiritual life in you. And she broke into crying and she immediately began to repent. And she, she repented and she asked for, uh, forgiveness from the Lord uh, for being angry at this person, that person. There were several people involved. Over years. Over years, even when she was a child. It even went back to her childhood. And she repented of all of that unforgiveness. And like Brother Fred said, <clears throat> it's a supernatural uh, endowment of God's love that went into her and do you know that her body was completely free oh, uh, she yeah. began to she she was on the oh. phone but she said i'm leaping up and down i'm leaping up and down and so the lord healed her body and made her whole and it was all because she repented of those things that had she had held against uh these other people and so what this message is a very practical message that all of us can respond to. And, and I speak over everyone that's on this session tonight that God will fill you with supernatural love. His love. Let the love of God uh, just rise up in you and let the peace of God rule your heart and your mind Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, like Brother Fred said, there's great blessings to come to you. There's great rewards, God's favor. Uh, if we will do exactly what the Lord would have us to do about blessing our enemies and loving our enemies. And, um, you know, I sense in my spirit that there's, there's a person who's been having some digestive issues. Uh, and, and the Lord says uh, that uh, the stress, uh, that, that you've been under uh, a great deal of stress. And so the Lord is, is lifting that off of you uh, right now in the name of yeah. Jesus. He's lifting off. Uh, I see your shoulders have been, uh, you're hurting. Your, your back of your neck has been hurting. And uh, you're, you've had some issues when you... When you eat, uh, it doesn't settle well. And so that stress, uh, the Lord is removing yes, that Lord. stress right Thank now you. in the name of Jesus. Yes, and all of that clustering uh, in your neck and your shoulders and your digestive system is being burned up Hallelujah. by the fire of God Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we thank the Lord for that healing. Amen. We thank the Lord. Uh, for just releasing uh, that stress off of you uh, in Jesus name. You know, I do have an example. This was a wonderful example that Brother Fred gave about writing uh, that name uh, on a piece of paper and throwing it in the, in the garbage can and the feet of Jesus. And, but <clears throat> I had a very difficult uh, upbringing, especially where my mother was concerned. Um, and um, she was a harsh individual. She's gone on to be with the Lord now. And um, But before she uh, passed, um, there was a time when she was very hostile to me, especially after uh, Brother Fred and I were growing spiritually and we were excited about the Lord and uh, we were preaching and teaching the word of God. Uh, she got very angry 
uh, with me and she would call me names like fanatic or you're, you just think you're, you're so holy and, and, um, and that you pray all the time and that you, you think that I don't pray. And, and she was just, a she was very upset with me, very angry with me. And she said some very hurtful things. And, and so I would send her, I would send her gifts and she would return them uh, to me in the mail. I would send her notes and letters and they would come back because um, we live here in Georgia and she lived in Texas and, and uh, she would send them back to me. You know, but the Lord spoke to me one day and he said, just love her. Just love her where she is. And and don't say anything uh, about preaching and teaching. Don't say anything about the word of God to her. Just love her. And that's what I started doing. That's I started talk when I talked with her on the phone, I would uh, ask her about how her day went and what she had been doing and and how what a great chocolate pie she made and and I I began to just love on her and before she passed um she and I had a a relationship that was from the Lord and I give him thanks for that uh because that is it's something that's very valuable it's very valuable uh, to have a good relationship with your family.